Hello and welcome to Living English. Today we'll be talking about possibilities and how to describe objects. And in our drama, Anne goes to see John, the private investigator she has hired to find her brother. She thinks she's seen her brother at the market. I thought I saw David at the market, but I didn't get a very good look and I lost him in the crowd. Oh, when was this? Just yesterday. How long since you've seen him? Mm, nearly two years. Are you sure you'd recognise him now? Of course. He's my brother. It's just... I'm thinking... he might have changed his appearance if he didn't want to be found. Mr Barber, I would recognise my brother, believe me. Of, of course, I'm sorry. Maybe you did see him at the market. It's just... you've been thinking about him a lot. The mind plays tricks, you know. I suppose so. Maybe it wasn't him. I don't know. Is there anything that would positively identify him? Uh, a jewellery, a scar, anything? His watch. My father gave it to him. He always wears it. Can you describe it? It's an old-fashioned watch, an Amiga. It was our grandfather's. Uh, what's the band made of? Silver. And the watch has an inscription. It says, To my son, Norman. Norman? That's our father's name. Grandfather gave it to him. Ah, Norman. In Chinese. In Chinese. He might have a neck band. I gave it to him as a going away present. Uh, what's it like? It's made of tortoise shell. It's a disc with a design. Like this. Ah, oh, yin yang. That's right, you know it. The band is made of leather. He said he'd always wear it. Yes, well, it's a... Uh, it's... it's just not much, uh, but it's something, I suppose. I'll call you next week uh, with some news. I hope so. Will they find David? You'll have to keep watching to find out. We'll start today with the words we use to talk about things that are possible. We call something that is possible a possibility. A possibility is something we think is going to happen, but we are not certain is going to happen. You can say, it will rain today, if you are certain that rain is coming. But if you're not certain, if you think that it could also not rain, you say, it might rain today. It might rain today, is talking about a possibility. We can also use the word might to talk about things that were possible in the past. Listen to what John says about Anne's brother. It's just, I'm thinking, he might have changed his appearance if he didn't want to be found. He might have changed his appearance. This doesn't mean that he has changed the way he looks. It means that it's possible that sometime in the past he has changed his appearance. It's also possible that he hasn't changed his appearance. When we use might to talk about the past, we always use it with have. He might have changed. Now listen to John talk about the possibility that Anne saw her brother at the market. Maybe you did see him at the market. Maybe you did see him. Maybe is one of the words with the same meaning as might. It means it's possible that. It's possible that you did see him. He could also have said, perhaps you did see him. But you can't use the word might with simple past tenses. The past tense of I see you is I saw you or I did see you. You can't use might with saw or did see. You must use the past participle. This is the form of a verb used with have. The past participle of see is seen. I have seen you. So instead of saying, 
maybe you did see him, John could have said, you might have seen him. In regular verbs, or when the ed ending is used to form the past tense, such as in the word changed, the past participle has the same form. Changed is the simple past tense and the past participle. He changed, he might have changed. Try saying he might have changed his appearance with the clip. It's just, I'm thinking, it's just, I'm thinking, he might have changed his appearance. The word have can also mean owning something. So when we say someone might have something, it can mean they might own it. I have a watch. And David, Anne's brother, what does he have? Listen. He might have a neckband. He might have a neckband means that it's possible that he has a neckband now. Now it's time to think about how we tell people what things look like. Listen to Anne describing her brother's watch. It's an old-fashioned watch, an Amiga. It was our grandfather's. Uh, what's the band made of? Silver. And the watch has an inscription. It says, To my son, Norman. We have looked at describing things before on Living English. We use adjectives to describe an object's colour and size. But we also tell people things about objects without using adjectives. First, Anne describes the watch using an adjective. See if you can guess what it is. It's an old-fashioned watch. It's old-fashioned. She means it's made in a style that isn't modern. Now listen to how she says the same thing without using an adjective. It was our grandfather's. Because it's her grandfather's, it's probably old-fashioned. Listen as she tells us what's special about the watch. And the watch has an inscription. It says, to my son, Norman. Now listen to Anne describe the neckband she gave to her brother. It's made of tortoiseshell. It's a disc with a design like this. What's tortoiseshell? Here's Michelle to help us. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Brenton. Hello everyone. Tortoise shell is a yellow and brown mottled material, like this hair clip. It used to be made from the shell of a turtle called the tortoise shell turtle. But now it can be made of plastic. So this is plastic tortoise shell? Yes. Now listen to what the bit of David's neckband that goes around the neck is made of. The band is made of leather. This bag is also made of leather. Now, I've got a few things here that are made of different materials. You tell me what material they are made of and at home, put it in a sentence, such as, the bag is made of leather. First, the vase. Glass. The vase is made of glass. Next, the spoon. Steel. The spoon is made of steel. The cup. China. The cup is made of china. The t-shirt. Cotton. The t-shirt is made of cotton. The book. Paper. The book is made of paper. Now you ask the questions. Like this. The book. What's the book made of? It's made of paper. 
The spoon. What's the spoon made of? It's made of steel. The bag. What's the bag made of? It's made of leather. What metal is the band of the watch that Anne's brother always wears? Uh, what's the band made of? Silver. It's made of silver. Silver is another metal. It's an expensive metal or a precious metal. What's another precious metal, Brenton? Gold. We have some things made of different materials. Let's describe their properties and see if you can guess what they are made of and what object it is. What are properties? Well, we'll find out. First, it's hard. It's transparent and it breaks easily. What does transparent mean? You can see through it. It's clear. Then the material must be... It must be glass. It's the vase. OK. This one is shiny. It's hard. It's opaque. And it comes from a mineral. Opaque means you can't see through it. What do you think it is? It's a metal. It's steel. So the object is the spoon. It's another metal. It's shiny, but it's pliable. Pliable? You can bend it easily. Then it's tin. And we call this object a tin because it's made of tin. It's pliable. It's soft. Mm -hmm. It stretches and it comes from a plant. That must be the T-shirt. It's made of cotton. And finally, it's pliable. It's dull in colour. It doesn't stretch. And it comes from an animal. Then it's the bag, which is made of leather. As well as saying things are made of a material, we can use the names of the material as adjectives. How do we do that? Well, this is a bag. It's made of leather. So what sort of bag is it? It's a leather bag. And what sort of vase is it? It's a glass vase. And what sort of T-shirt is it? It's a cotton T-shirt. What about the book? We don't say it's a paper book because books are always paper. But I would call this a paper bag. What about the spoon? Well, this is a metal spoon or a steel spoon. But what about this one? It's not a wood spoon, but a wooden spoon. The adjective from the word wood is wooden. Well, that's enough for today. We learned how to use might and might have and the names of some common materials. Next time, we'll look at visiting the doctor. And the present perfect continuous tense.